Hello there guys, how's it going? I'm not on the bank today, I'm not out fishing a lake or indeed a river as it is a clo the close season in the UK on the rivers. Not for much longer though, a few more weeks and the rivers will be open and we can, us river anglers can all get out there and be wandering along the bank hoping to tempt a few fish, perhaps some barbel and chub out from the waterways. But today what I'm doing is going to be showing you how to make these. These are what I appropriately nicknamed the Boddington Bobbers. Now the reason for that is because it uses an item for a, from a tin of Boddingtons. You can probably hear it there. And that is one of these. And that is a widget or an aerator. This particular item, once you open your tin of bitter or lager or Guinness, um, different item in the Guinness. The Guinness widgets are like a round kind of ping pong ball. But when you open your tin, it aerates your lager or in this case bitter and puts a nice frothy head on it to give that kind of draft appearance so that's what I'm going to be showing you today is how I use that to make these now these are only a rough and ready float they're cheap and cheerful not going to cost much to make and as is the case I'm no master float creator so as I say bear with me just cheap and cheerful anyway let's crack on shall we and um, show you the items that I'll be using how to make them and how cheap they are to make obviously you do need to purchase a can of Boddingtons or know a friend or relative that does enjoy the drink if you don't particularly like drinking Boddingtons. But very cheap, very cheerful. Let's crack on. Right then, just going to go through all the items that you'll require. Obviously, wooden skewers, as I showed you already, 5mm in diameter, so you get a nice snug fit. You get these from your local shops, your corner shops, Sainsbury's, Tesco's, etc. And you do want to be looking for a 5mm in diameter so you get a nice snug fit with the widget. Obviously you want your widgets which you want to take out of your can and I'll show you that in a minute. A pair of scissors, sharp knife or and a craft knife or Stanley knife ideal. A couple of paint brushes although you can actually dip the floats when you're coating them in paint. I find found that my results kind of varied at times and for the intricate parts I prefer to paint them uh, the actual floats itself directly going through the paint that I'm using as you've seen on my video <coughs> when I was using the floats they are, they are bright orange now this is plastic oak project paint it's a uh, enamel paint very nice dries very well gives a good glossy finish and a very robust finish as well now unfortunately I can't seem to get hold of this anymore. This costs around about £2.99 at the time. And I can't seem to get plastic oak tangerine orange as it's known. As you can see there. And I can't seem to get hold of that anymore. So the closest that you can get to it that I've noticed, as plastic oak don't make that particular one anymore, is by Humbrol. And Humbrol do an enamel in a tangerine colour. Now, I've got another tin with me today of Humbrol, so that's so. If I want to make a red tip and a orange body, you can do. Obviously, if you're keeping the price down as much as possible, stick like I did to just the one colour, which is the tangerine orange. That way, you're not having to purchase any more pots of paint. But as I say, I've also got a little tin of Humbrol as well, and that's in a gloss lipstick rouge or lipstick red. And so, if you want to paint the tip of your float red and the body orange you can do. It just breaks up the colour a bit on the surface of the water. A little bit of clear varnish. Now you don't have to varnish the uh, float body once you've painted the tip and the, of the float and the body if you don't want to, if you want to save a bit of money. Um, I found on the first set of floats that I made they've been absolutely fine but if you want it to be more robust then I would definitely use some polyurethane on it or coat it with a little bit of varnish obviously you are going to be using varnish on the stem of the float that's what I will stress now because obviously you want it to be fairly robust and water resistant for that side of things I am going to be using a light waterproof wood stain in varnish which is uh, what you'd use on your normal furniture for your garden furniture very cheap very cheerful moving on Cornish thread now that is not necessary on this occasion if I didn't want to use it that's if you was going to whip on a eye or run ring on the bottom of the float now for that side of things 
I would certainly recommend if you're going to put a ring on the bottom of the float that you, if you're trying to keep the cost down you can use the hinge from a safety pin you just clip the wire and you're left with that nice ring on the back of the safety pin and you can use that or you can purchase what's known as uh, art wire or florist wire get around about 50 meters for two pound two pound fifty and I'll bear in mind if you're making a run ring at the bottom of your float 50 meters is going to last you a lifetime but what I tend to use even though this particular float here has got a little run ring at the bottom which was made using a little bit of fuse wire even though that is the case most of the time I just prefer to use float rubbers which is what you would have seen me using on my video when I was using the Boddington bobbers um, moving on from that 120 grit sandpaper you can use finer that's just to round the ends off of the float and give them a nice shape a little bit of super glue the idea of that is just to use a very small amount when you're if you're whipping on or even placing the body in place although you won't need them if you won't need the glue if you're using the five millimeter skewers because they give a snug fit without needing it but if you are deciding to whip on a line guide on the bottom of the float then a little bit of this just as you finish off whipping on the thread just allows it to hold in place and just strengthens it but that's only a slight droplet that you're putting on a very small droplet and then finishing off the whipping with varnish so I think that's covered about everything um, yeah I'm gonna now crack on and um, put this together I must be honest, I am going to consume that tasty looking glass of Boddington's before I do the rest of the video. So, first and foremost, your can of Boddington's. And just be careful while you're doing this, you don't want to lose your fingers. Just push in. And you can then cut through and use scissors if you want. way around with the uh, knife and there you have your little free to use bobber body well there you are that's the um, safety pin that I'm going to be using today to create the run ring on the bottom of the float and the section you want to be using is here at the back you want to cut this down with a pair of snips and just or a pair of pliers just cut it down so that you've got a couple of little legs left on this section where the hinge of the safety pin is and that will then act once it's whipped to the bottom of the float will act as your run ring all right, what you can see I'm doing at the moment is just using a multi-tool and taking the clasp off of the safety pin so I'm left with a nice little leg and the coil which will which obviously acts as the um, hinge or spring for the safety pin and that is going to be the run ring for the bobber then what you want to do is just cut off the pointed end of your skewer true blue peter fashion here's one that I did earlier then what you want to do taking your 120 grit sandpaper you don't want a harsh sandpaper for this this is in my opinion quite fine you could go up to 200 grit if you wanted to but this is just right for being able to shape it then you want to take this at an angle because you want to give it a nice rounded finish just keep your hand at the correct angle place your thumb underneath to keep the correct angle and support the skewer and then just start begin to rub literally rub across and as you're doing this at an angle just keep rotating the skewer so you get an even taper So as you will have seen on my other video when I was using the bobbers they've got just straight edge to the to the top of them and they're quite as I said previously rough and ready would sum them up and this just gives it a gives you a nice taper to both ends I 
then when you're happy with the way that is just take the corner of your sandpaper wrap it round it so it's holding it like a cone and then just begin to rotate so you get a nice even taper and shape to the float like so you can see that's coming on but obviously as you're doing it just keep an eye that it is even now what you want to do is taking a sharp knife or a craft or standing knife is notch a groove both sides so that you've got a recess for the safety pin to slide into so it holds better gives a nice more snug finish and makes it easier for when you're whipping the thread onto it and what you want to do is just slide that safety pin section in place along the two notches that you've just created like so you can see it's taking shape and it whacked as a run ring as I say you don't need to put a run ring on there if you just want to use float rubbers like I do right so obviously what I've got here is a little fly what you might assume to be a fly tying vice but it's actually a Rolson what's known as a Rolson helping hand so I've got this absolutely donkey years back actually my my mother bought it for me as a birthday present many years back and I think she picked it up for three pound four pound if I remember correctly and um, picked it up at a charity shop very useful device you've got a magnifying glass there as well and um, if you haven't got something similar like this because this is what I'm going to be using to hold the stem of the float in place as I whip the Cornish thread round the line guide just gives me stability but if you haven't got something like that you could quite easily use a, a pair of uh, monkey grips set to the right tension and clamp it on the edge of a table or a piece of wood even a couple of strong cloves line or cloves pegs that you hang your washing out with would do the job as well and certainly would suffice Now those coils won't remain there, that's just giving me some tension as I'm starting off near to the bottom of the float. Remember to keep your coils and your whippings all neat. Make sure they're married up next to the previous one. And if not, just snug them up by putting your thumb, your left thumb in place here, or if you're right-handed, your right thumb, and just keeps the rum ring in place. And then just push the whippings down so that they meet up nicely. and just come above the legs because you'll be whipping back down there eventually and what we're going to do is unwrap these so they are surplus to requirement they were just to give me some tension as I started my whipping and we're going to snip that
and then carry on whipping. And what you want to do, get just a thicker thread, just a little piece and form a loop like so, and then place it under this thread that you're already whipping on. And I'll show you why that is the reason for, so that we can draw this thread that we're whipping on, go through this loop, and you pull this loop through, and it'll give you a nice, smooth finish. As I said, I'm no <laughs> float builder, so I'm sure based on talent and ability in general and how many, how often you make, get into making your floats, you will find your actual quality, like anything, improves as you learn and your experience increases. a little bit shorter I think eh? make life a little bit easier on the fingers You know, just want to cut that now and keep your tension on here put your thread through like so let's say keep your tension carry on with that and just pull it through Be steady with it, you don't want to break even with your hard work with the friends. And then just snip the remainder. Like so. Now you can take it, you can take that a bit shorter if you use a sharp standing knife or a sharp knife. Then what I'm gonna do. is just apply a little bit of glue on there just to hold that in place but that only a little droplet just smear that across now that we've finished off with the whipping I'm going to apply just a little droplet of glue here super glue just to hold that in place and then finish all this off with wood stain varnish so then, now that we've got the whipping finished and pulled that last little bit of whipping back through using the loop of thicker thread, I'm just going to apply a single drop of glue just to finish off that area and just hold the end of the knot. Uh, smear it. I will smear this across. OK, 
couple of drops there. That'll just lock all that thread in place. Now this is a polyurethane based wood preservative and um, this is what you would use on your, your garden furniture etc. Antique pine, it's a nice staining and it's touch dry within half an hour which is always useful when you're working with wood products to be able to crack on and put another coat on if need be. But that's what I'm going to be using for the stem of the float and you can if you want to, you can finish off on top with a lacquer uh, I'm not going to be, I'm trying to keep the price as cheap and cheerful as possible. Right then, now what we're going to do is thread the skewer onto the widget. Obviously, adjusting the amount of tip that you want showing to whatever your preference is. So. Now, as you're forcing this down on the 5mm skewer, just be steady with it because you don't want to snap it. It's a very tight fit and that's very good because it's giving you a nice watertight seal through the centre of the widget without requiring any glue at all. Push it down to the length you require. I personally think that's, that's more than enough. As you can see, it's already starting to take shape. And you can imagine that bobbing along on the river. Bob, bob, bob. Boom. Hopefully a nice perch on there <laughs> and the old clutches zipping away on the reel. Um, just needs a nice little bit of bright paint so you can see the top section of the body and the tip. Remember this will take two or three coats. Don't rush it, don't overload your brush. Less haste, haste more pace. It's the order of the day, take your time. Well that's the second coat of plastic oak paint, I'm just leaving it in the vise, upside down, so if there are any drips, drops to go, come off of it, which there shouldn't be, they'll just fall onto the magazine. Now if you haven't got a hobby vise like this, you can just use your clothesline pegs to hang your floats upside down and leave them to dry. Just applying that humble Ferrari red gloss enamel paint to the tip give a nice break up in colour there and bite registration and indication orange body nice and visual red tip so what I'm going to do now is just finish off the stem with a little bit of clear varnish and coat the whippings with it just to strengthen them. Now you don't have to, you can coat this with the what I saw me using which was an Everbuild um, made by a company called Everbuild, it's a polyurethane wood stain and weatherproofing stain, you can just go with that if you want to but I do feel this gives a much glossier finish a clear fast drying varnish well, all completed now. Boddington widget transformed into the body of a Boddington bobber. And lovely red tip, orange body. Stems had a double coat in it's had clear varnish and ever build weatherproof wood stain. Now you don't need to use both, you can just go with one. But me going with the two, it just gives it a little bit more of a glossy finish and obviously gives it more uh, weatherproofing or waterproofing. Stops the uh, river water from ingressing and rotting the stem. But as I say, a single coat with either or a double coat will do the job absolutely fine. Now what you can do as well, you can build these up uh, with the uh, wood staining to create a darker, deeper kind of antique pine effect and change the colour of the stem to suit whatever you fancy. So as I say, I've gone with a single coating of the wood stain and then a coating of fast drying clear varnish. With the whipping on the eyelet, I've just taken it up just above the wire itself 
With this one from previous season, I decided to whip from the eyelet and go all the way around in a spiral effect to the top of the stem, just so it looks fancy. But as I say, I'm no master craftsman when it comes from when it comes to actually putting floats together and uh, building floats. Far from it, as I think you'll agree. But these are cheap; they're cheerful. If you know anyone that drinks Boddingtons, if you don't like a little bit of the Boddingtons bitter yourself, if you've got any friends or relatives, get them to save the widgets out of the cans and try it for yourself. Get some skewers and build a nice Boddington bobber. Still, can't wait to actually be back out on the rivers and later this year be back out on these bobbers and see them just bob, 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 bobbing along. They're quite nice and buoyant floats as you'd expect with these and they can take a double lobworm or even small live baits quite well. Anyway, I have a can of Boddingtons here to finish and who can say no to that? I certainly can't. So I think I'll be having a sip of that soon. Anyway, if you have enjoyed the video please do take time to give it a like and click that thumbs up button that's very much appreciated if you're not subscribed please do take time to click the subscribe button you'll be kept up to date with all my latest videos plus there's a good back catalogue of videos to watch on my channel and there'll be quite a few videos coming out this season I've got some plans to fish quite a few different places so until my next video cheers once again for all your support all your kind comments taking time to view the channel and I'll catch you on the flip side on another video. Tight lines guys, goodbye.